Last, I'd like to welcome up Antonio Tanan. He was recently doing a Fulbright in Syria, and he's now currently the Fulba Fulbright ambassador. He's also a fan of, uh, of food, web, and uh, what was the last? Oh, and photography, of course. So hopefully we'll see some of that tonight. Um, I welcome up here Antonio Tanan. Thank you. Good evening. Before I begin, I just want to clarify that these opinions are my own and they do not reflect the Fulbright program or the US Department of State. <laughs> if I close my eyes, I can still hear the church bells ring. I can hear the solemn call to prayer reverberate from atop the minarets. Allahu Akbar, it proclaims, God is great. I can taste the shawarma sandwiches my friends and I used to eat on our late night shawarma runs. We each had our favorite spots. This was mine, a place called Taifur. The cook here always uh, offered us slices of lamb as he prepared our sandwiches. Even the things I thought I would never miss, I find myself daydreaming about. There was this quirky man who used to walk down my street about once every week, always in the morning. As he walked past each building, he would announce in this very nasal voice, over and over. I used to bury my head under my pillows uh, as he made his rounds. <laughs> um, I would do anything to hear him pass one more time as he would ask people who have things to sell. These are the memories I think about, that, these are the memories that stream through my mind when I think about Syria. These are the people I think about. I want to share these stories because they put faces to a country. They relate a human experience. When a country is defined uh, solely by its conflicts, they, the, uh, the faces start to fade away. Stories get replaced by policy and politics takes a center stage. In this talk, I want to focus on the faces of Syria. I want to highlight culture as I experienced in my Fulbright and hopefully offer a different perspective than what is often talked about. When my friends ask me what it was like to live in Syria, I tell them about Syrian hospitality. Even for the smallest occasion, there was always a full spread on the table. Seconds and thirds were inevitable, so you had to learn to pace yourself. And everywhere you go, whether it was the market, or the store, or the butcher shop, you were always a guest, and you were always showered with this invitation for coffee. Turkish coffee, Arabic coffee, it's all the same over there. Um, I tell my friends about the time I got lost in Aleppo on my way to the vegetable market, or souk. I strolled up to an older gentleman snacking on a bag of peanuts, <laughs> and in my broken Arabic, I asked if he knew how to get to the market. Before he said anything, he extended the bag of peanuts to me and said, Tfaddal. The word Tfaddal doesn't have an exact translation in English. It's like, welcome and please have some, all packed into this one powerful word. Tfaddal, he said. I didn't know what to do. My instincts from grade school were saying, don't accept food from a stranger. <laughs> So in an awkward hesitation, I explained that I had just eaten a big lunch and I was too full. He insisted another time, uh, but I dodged the invitation by talking about how delicious my food was. Uh, he smiled and led the way to the market. The man was incredibly nice. He not only insisted on walking me to the souk, but he pointed out prominent landmarks along the way, like a t good tour guide. I told him, uh, we exchanged stories. And during this short uh, walk, and I told him how I was an American Fulbright student studying Syrian cuisine in Aleppo. You should have seen the smile on his face. It was that of a good host. He proudly started listing all the foods I needed to eat until we reached the market. Having nothing else to offer, he extended the bag of peanuts one more time. Tfaddal, he repeated, tfaddal. At this point, I couldn't say no. That would be aib or disrespectful. So I grabbed a few of the dry roasted peanuts and tossed them in my mouth and said, shukran. I said, thank you. He extended his hand across his chest, a symbol of modesty and sincerity across the Middle East, which literally trans, and, and he said, ya meet ahlo sahla, which literally translates into, you are most welcome a hundred times over. I, went to, I want to end tonight with a recent twit pic from a friend in Aleppo, Human Graces. In the caption, she writes, lunch today in the darkness, and posts it to her Twitter stream. Electricity in Aleppo gets cut six to eight hours every day. The electricity just turned off before her family could gather for lunch. When you define a country only by its c conflicts, you miss out on moments like this. You miss out on the church bells and the calls to prayer. 
the foods with friends, the endless coffee, and the family breaking bread together, even when the world outside seems upside down. The news coming from Syria breaks my heart, but I hope I was able to shed some light into Syrian culture. I want to thank the Fulbright program for offering this incredible opportunity, and of course the Syrian people for hosting me in their country. May they find peace and stability soon. Thank you.